Hey there, my name's Jason. I'm another someone who's been spending a lot of time at home during this quarantine. So I thought I would try and make a few videos about uh, painting miniatures and something I've been into a long time. I'm never going to be that pro painted, amazing master that you've seen uh, a million YouTube videos made by instead. I'm someone that tries to get my models looking pretty decent, make them table ready, not spend too much time painting them because um, while I want them to look good, I also want to be efficient. So it's trying to find a combination of those two features uh, and also making model painting a little more approachable for someone who's maybe um, not had much experience painting. So I'm going to try to show you a few tricks to maybe make your painting a little more pleasant, a little more efficient, um, but still have a, uh, an army that's going to look really good when you when you put it out there to present or to um, battle your opponents, whatever you decide to do with it. So you can see my table has become more and more cluttered, more of a mess than I probably ever planned on it being. But, you know, I got all the tools I need here. I got a bunch of projects I'm half working on. I got a lot of paints from different brands. Um, and I'll show you everything I'm going to use for this. So the model I'm going to paint is this... Feral Cultist. It's made by Black Cat Bases. I've been putting all my models on 25 millimeter bases. That's not the base that came with it, but um, you know, you can choose which one you want. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is wash the model. And I'm going to do that in my sink. And the reason I do it is because a lot of times when models come from manufacturers, they have a little bit of mold release or other stuff on it that is going to make it so your paint doesn't hold as well. Um, some companies will say it's optional or say they clean their models real well. And that's, you know, it's up to you. I used to not really clean my models, but now I pretty much clean them all. Dawn soap, a little warm water. And uh, if it's really gross, you can use a toothbrush. Otherwise, I just give it a rub, rub, rub. And um, that's usually good enough. Okay, here I am at the sink. And um, I'm going to let the water run for a second just to get it warm. And um, since I'm only watching one model, I'm just going to put some soap in my hand like that. But uh, if I was doing a whole bunch of models, as you can see over here, I've been washing a bunch. For those, I got a nice dish and uh, put some soap in it. Wash them that way. Wash a lot at once. I have a colander out in the garage that's strictly for washing models and helping me to strain out a bunch of little pieces. Really don't want to send them down the drain. So I'm going to rub this little guy until I find uh, all the soap is pretty much off him. And you really want to make sure you get every little bit of soap off. All right. Shake them out a little bit. Set them over here. My other models. Maybe press them into this towel a little bit. Make sure he's real dry. All right. So this is kind of a waiting game because you want to make sure your model is 100% dry. Not even a tiny bit wet. Um, so I usually will let them sit overnight. Uh, for today I'm going to let them sit for a couple hours before I get this video back. I want to talk about the different primer options you have. Primer is a real good idea on your model. Help your paint stay uh, <coughs> adhered better, especially on a metal model. I've been buying this Krylon Color Max mostly because it's widely available. It is not the only primer to use, but it's the one I've been using lately. It works pretty well. I like Ultra Flat. I'm going to be using this white on that Cultist today. But some other ones I commonly use gray sometimes I'm in the gray uh, in a mood for gray sometimes I use black uh, and that's a rust-oleum brand okay so with your primer the color behind it is going to determine how well colors show up um, on top of that primer so if you're going to use a white primer it means you're you're going to be able to use maybe uh, those games workshop contrast paints you're going to need white underneath um, also if you're uh, using lighter, brighter colors might be better, but if you want your model to look darker, sometimes black will work. I think you got to just kind of ex 
experiment a little bit and the gray has been a happy middle ground for me a lot of the time in fact if you'd asked me a year ago i say oh i just prime in gray forever the other thing i found recently i want to show you is this craft foam primer white this is a primer you can spray on foam which i found to be handy especially for building terrain just thought i'd throw that in there that it is available as you may or may not know uh, if you spray anything from an aerosol can on foam it melts it um, this will solve that problem for you you can primer foam i've lined up all the paints i'm going to use for painting this feral cultist and i got a selection of some games workshop paints and some cheaper paints i've purchased and i'm going to kind of go through them so you know what i'm doing when i'm actually painting first i want to start out by talking about a couple of these i guess they are delta creative brand acrylic paints you can find these at most local stores like fred meyer or walmart kind of places this type of paint or a craft store like michael's um uh, they're good for base coating they work well enough for a lot of what i'm doing and it can help save you a little money you have to do a little trial and error some of them work better than others one of the main colors i use on these feral cultists is this purple color but i also hit it with this darker version and after i've painted some sections purple i really like this new citadel contrast magos purple color this green, one of my favorite greens, the moot green. I use it strictly for the cultist's hair. So just a tiny bit of that on there. When I'm painting the flesh tone, I use this Citadel Cadian flesh tone for the basic flesh. And then I like to go over it afterwards with this contrast Goldiman flesh. But that is not the only answer. I've also used this Raikland Flesh Shade quite often. And sometimes I just mix up a little bit of wash on my own um, with whatever else I have around. So uh, don't feel tied to these. Find something that works for you. Uh, you can use the Citadel Lead Belcher, but also this Folk Art Metallic Gunmetal Gray works pretty great. I've put some of that in this little pot so it's more convenient for me to add and then for the brown bits belts uh, little bags things like that or boots or gloves I like to use this snake bite leather um, but an alternative to that if you don't have that contrast paint is to get any brown paint you have and then put a little bit of a dark wash over it and that'll work fine uh, I'm also going to hit some parts with this Agros Dunes wash or contrast paint and use it kind of like a wash. And I know contrast paints are all the rage right now and I've been really trying to mess around with them and get my own feeling for them. Um, you can see I'm using them quite a bit, mostly because I've been experimenting with them. Uh, I don't think they're the fix-all, end-all that some people were maybe hoping for, but they are pretty cool, and the way I generally think of them is similar to a wash, even though their consistency is a tiny bit thicker, uh, but you don't tend to have to use gravity as much. It, they just really adhere to the model in a way that where washes uh, don't. You have to use gravity with a wash. And set your model on its side, let it dry, flip it over, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so it does save some time, but um, like all paints, the contrast paints are just another tool in your basket, and um, they are expensive, so you got to decide if it's worth it for you. But for me, I've been having fun. Okay, I'm sitting here. I've got my feral cultist. He's primed up with white and. Um, I glued him to this 25 millimeter base. Can't really see that great, but you kind of get the picture. Um, <clears throat> not much to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, apply some of this purple as a base coat. <clears throat> so put a little bit of it in my dish. You can also keep in mind, normally you might be painting five or ten or a squad of 
minis all at once. That's fine to do. I find I can paint about uh, maybe five. Otherwise, I get too bored. So I'm basically going to try to make his robes, this purple color, as a base. And I got a fairly large brush here. I'm not trying to be too perfect, staying in the lines or anything. This For this part, I just want to get that slop on that purple. Um, oftentimes, you'll hear that too thin coats rule discussed. Something you don't hear often is why you might do that. I mean, ideally, you want as thin a coat as possible because every coat of paint obscures details on your model. So, if you can apply thin coats, that's great, but you also need coverage. So, one of the things that makes some of those Citadel paints so wonderful and so popular, despite the drawbacks that are also commonly discussed is that they do give great coverage. I mean, they're just great paints and people complain about the prices and everything else, but they, um, you kind of get what you paid for in, in some ways. Although I find with this purple, this is just as good. So you may paint a layer of paint and you can, probably saw I didn't water this down. I didn't mix anything with it. I'm just using it straight out of the bottle. For me, I like this consistency. Everyone's got their preferences though. So just because I like something doesn't mean it's perfect for you and you should feel free to experiment, figure things out. A lot of painting and enjoying this hobby is the trial and error. Knowing you can always um, dip it in some simple green and take the paint right off especially with a metal model you don't really have to worry too much though after a while you'll probably even find little ways you can fix mistakes you make <clears throat> so trying to get everywhere this guy has robes that cover a large portion of his body so that kind of makes it convenient for doing something like this you can go pretty simple the other thing is a lot of people um or i can even say myself when i first was working on models i thought hey i can only think in terms of base coats like painting this purple and that red and that green but over time i realized what you can do with dry brushing and washes can really enhance a model a lot with not too much extra work. Okay, so I painted this guy purple on his robes. Now, I'm gonna let him sit for a few minutes and dry so I can do the next part of this video. That didn't take too long. Um, but normally you might have two or three models, five models, 10 models lined up, and you could work on the next one by the time you get to the end of your row. You know, the paint's dry on that first one. You can start on the next step. So, anyway, um, that's kind of step one. Okay, here you can get a good look at that purple base coat. Now that it's dry, you can see we got some pretty good coverage. And because I'm going to put a, um, another paint over the top of this, I'm not too worried if there's little holes or little areas that kind of got missed. So next, I'm going to be using some of this darker purple. It's called Passion. And I learned a trick. When you got just a little bit of paint to use out of one of these bottles, you pop the cap open. There's that tiny little reservoir right there in the cap. So that's where I'm going to grab a little bit of purple paint to use for this guy's little face mask. How's that? I'm going to paint some of the flesh tone. Got this Cadian flesh tone. 
but there are a lot of different flesh tones. This just happens to be the one that I have right now. Um, I don't think it's all that special, but it also works fine. So, um, also, I got kind of a crappy brush I'm using right now. And it's uh, brush preference is another topic of discussion. And I found that I don't like to waste anything. So even when a brush gets kind of beat up, I'm still trying to use it. And some of my friends tell me I'm nuts for that. Maybe it's a added challenge when I'm painting. Um, I find that you kind of, learn how a brush is gonna go across the the model and then you tend to just get used to certain brushes that's fine you can spend a lot of money on a brush and have it be absolute garbage you can also spend very little on a brush and have it be one of your best brushes you've ever owned i i don't know there is some rhyme and reason to taking care of your brush you want to wash it after every use and um make sure you go with the grain when you're drying it off go with the bristles clean your water off and things like that but um honestly i don't know there's probably more knowledge out in the world than i have about quality brushes all right so let's see got that guy's hands got his face didn't take too much time i do kind of wonder how much time i end up spending on one of these models altogether for each one we can look at what we've done so far oh look i missed a little spot on his head Right there. Boom. You know, nothing too fancy here. Next up is gun, which I like to just paint a weapon, usually this gunmetal gray color. can hit it with a wash or if you have Nuln oil that'll always look good on that on metallics I don't think I mentioned it when I was going over my paints in the beginning but uh, probably also going to use some bronze I have a bronze color that has my absolute one of my absolute favorite names for a paint worn penny and i'm gonna get out here in a few minutes to do his little neck breathing apparatus thing probably also tell that i'm experimenting with some different angles for this camera view as i make this video on my phone not pro video maker at least not yet maybe I will be someday for now I'm just trying to learn some how to do that but uh, also just wanting to kind of share some of my modeling techniques and um, you know I'm not the best but I have learned a lot over the years and I think Modeling is one of those things that's it's hard to get into because you watch these pro painters, people which I'm not taking anything away from their videos. They're awesome. I've seen some of them on YouTube. And uh, I, I enjoy watching them, honestly. But the skill level is just too high. And uh, I think it, it can be discouraging when you think about being a new painter and trying to get into this hobby and trying to make your models look good. And then you get um, you get a couple and then you start painting and you realize it's not as easy as it looks in those videos. So 
I'm hoping you can watch this and see, hey, you know, maybe this really is more doable to make them look pretty good. So I'm still doing all base coats here, so remember that. Uh, but I got flesh tone, got some gunmetal gray, gunmetal, and then a um, couple shades of purple. All right. Magic is really going to come together at the end. Now, there he is so far. Here's the other paint I'm going to use on this model. It's this Deco Art Metallic called Worn Penny. It is another one of those cheap ones you can get at the craft store. Dollar, two dollars, maybe two fifty a bottle. Very um, value, good value. Okay, so he's got this neck thing I don't know what's going on with that thing but I want it to stand out a little bit kind of gives him that post-apocalyptic look And that is really it right there. Next, I'm going to paint his shoes. Give this stuff a shake. Just a little bit. So this is a bigger brush right here, but um, it's got a pretty sharp tip. Sometimes you want... Like that's all you need is it's uh sharp tips going to hold the paint you need, give you the detail you need. I mean, most of the time you're not sitting there trying to paint eyeballs and need like the tiniest little brush. Remember when I was first learning how to paint, I was always going with the tiniest brush and just trying to do all this, like just paint so meticulously and it ended up taking me a really long time to work on one model where now I mean I do have certain models that I want to spend a long time on and do my absolute best work but a lot of times I just want to kind of have a casual paint sesh or I'm just trying to get through painting a squad of something so there's some contrast snake bite leather on his feet That's pretty good. The contrast paints will always show up nicely on a white primed model. So next, I'm going to do his hair. So get my brush cleaned up. This, yeah, using that moot green, give it a little shake. I love this color. There we go. There's the problem with these Citadel paint pots. They're always a pain to use. Paint just seems to drip all over the place. I feel like you're always wasting half of it. But uh, yeah, you get used to that too. So here we go. Just painting this guy with some green hair. Gives him kind of a shadow run look or something. I don't know. Blue hair also looks kind of good. For some reason, it's like if the hair contrasts with the purple, I think it looks better. Got some water on there from my dipping, cleaning my brush. All right, look at that. All right. 
There he is with his green hair. See, he's starting to come together. Starting to get there. Next, I'm going to use some of this Agros Dunes. Shake it up. Always give your paint a good shake. And this is going to make things look real dirty. So that's what I want for this guy. I want him to look kind of like gross and like he's been out in the wasteland causing trouble. So I'm going to paint it on all the metallics. Like I said, you could use a Nuln oil here. You could make your own wash out of just a little bit of black paint, water it down, that kind of thing. You, you just want something that's going to go in all the cracks around your metallics to get your desired look. This. This one, the Agros Dunes, kind of makes things look a little rusted out, like they've been sitting in the sun. Sometimes if I'm feeling kind of lazy, I'll even use this over my flesh wash, because it does actually look fine. And you can see there's parts where I maybe went over the line a little bit, when I'm all done here, I don't think anyone's going to notice that. Okay. So, I think I'm going to hit his little mouth guard mask thing with it, just to give that a different look. Maybe his hair. So this stuff gets nicely in the cracks. It's going to bring out a little bit of detail in your model. You could go with a darker shade of green as a wash on the hair, or you could dry brush a lighter shade of green. It's really up to you, but see, look, he's starting to look kind of dirty there. I like it. Here I have some contrast Gulliman flesh. Shake that up. This... I'm going to use just over the areas that I want to look like flesh, bring them to life a little bit. That means his face and his hands. One of the things I learned about painting eyes in that area is most of the time when you're looking at these models, you're looking down at them from an above angle because they're on your game table or whatever. And um, I mean, you don't really have to paint the eyes. You just really want to make the appearance of eyes. So I mean, you just want to get a lot of dark in those recesses. This stuff's going to dry look pretty good when it dries so I'm not worried about getting it on a little thick it's also gonna like outline his fingers and add a little bit of texture and life to his his hands where he's holding holding his gun All right, we're going to take a look at that when it dries. Now I just have this Contrast Magos Purple to add to his robes. Shake it up. And I will say this is maybe my favorite contrast paint that's out right now. All righty. So I really want to make sure it goes into all those holes and nooks and crannies in his tattered robe. I 
find that one of my challenges when I'm painting large surfaces like this is, I mean, first of all, you want to apply kind of evenly, but I miss spots because I can't remember what part I've painted. So I usually start kind of in the lower half of the body and I spin the model around and then I work my way up. There's a really great paint that's a very similar shade made by Reaper, I think, called Burgundy Wine. And honestly, if I didn't have this contrast paint, that's what I would be using for this. I'd water it down and make kind of my own wash. So contrast paints are kind of a new thing. That's the thing. The way they're advertised, it's like they can just be used on their own, and honestly, they can be. I just really like the way I can paint them over a lighter shade of the same type of color. I like how the contrast purple looks over this other lighter purple. Sometimes you can find two or three colors that like a contrast paint or a wash will look good over and you paint in different parts of the model these other shades and then you hit them all with the same contrast or the same shade. Yep. Getting there. And remember at the end, you can always go back and touch things up. Doesn't have to be perfect on the first go around. A lot of times you'll just find that little nook and cranny where you didn't paint anything. I'm like, okay, that's purple now. All right, looking pretty covered. I will uh, look him over one last time when I'm all done, when he's all dry, but this is pretty good. I'll probably call it good. I'll uh, go get another one of him. I think I have one I painted earlier and show you that. Check this out. This is basically the same model, but I painted him I don't know, a few weeks ago. And he looks pretty good. So he's got orange hair. There you go. Uh, but you can see what he looks like after I've also applied uh, an acrylic fixative stuff spray to him at the end to kind of protect the paint job. And that gave him a little bit of shine, which on this particular model, I think works fine. Uh, but there's different spray fixatives you can use. This was a Krylon satin one I believe I used. But there's a few brands. Um, there's a Minwax polyurethane spray I use sometimes. There's also um, a Tester's Dull Coat. If I want something to look really matte, you can use that. Uh, but the whole point is, you know, when you see this guy down on your battlefield, like that he's uh he's gonna look pretty good all right i hope you enjoyed that um i had fun making it uh i apologize i'm not uh, a professional video creator at this point um but hopefully i'll get better and better uh anyways hope you picked up a couple of tips and tricks maybe you can use maybe encourage you to pick up that next model and some brushes and paints and and get started on it. all right have a great day